title of this presentation, Who Discovered America, <coughs> is a question. And the reason for that is I'm not here to tell you who discovered. I'm here to ask the question and share some notes. Uh, the primary source of the information that you're seeing is a book called Before Columbus by Don Wolfson. And I'll talk more about sources at the end of the presentation. So we're going to explore this question. And I'm not saying that we're going to answer it, OK? Uh, a possible candidate for the discovery or uh, discovery of the Americas is the Phoenician civilization. Has anyone ever heard of them before? OK. Well, basically, it was a maritime empire. And maritime means it was not land-based, but sea-based. So if you look at this map, they started here near what's modern-day Lebanon. And basically, they had colonies all throughout the Mediterranean and even beyond where they would have trading posts. Right? So, this was, so obviously, they were very skilled sailors and navigators because their entire civilization was based on that. And for their day and their time, they had the finest ships in the world. And um, they didn't just row. They used sails. What advantage do you think that gives you if you use sails instead of rowing? Yes? So it's, it's a bit faster, but in the long run, it'll always be go and make, when people get tired, people get tired, let's say. It's faster. Do sails get tired? No. no. What does that mean? Faster and? Faster and one gets tired. Further. They could sail further. Now, something peculiar about their culture and religion uh, it's known that they practiced human sacrifice, and they did it on stones like this, which have a little notch for the blood to drip out onto the ground. Okay? Um, they were at war with the ancient Greeks, who were located around here, and in 146 BCE, they lost, and they were conquered by the Greeks, one of the things that the Greeks did was forbid them to practice human sacrifice. So to continue to do that was a matter of religious freedom for them. It's not like it was just a hobby. It was something they considered to be their religion. So they refused to stop. The only way to continue was to escape. And it's, it's fought that they escaped into the United States, what's now the United States. One of the ways that we know that is that these slabs used by the Phoenicians were found in the northeastern United States. This picture is actually from the northeastern United States. And it's the exact same ones that are found at other Phoenician uh, settlement sites. Another thing that was found were thousands of fist-sized stones with Phoenician characters written on them. So there would be one character per stone. And they would use individual letters on stones because uh, letters were numbers for them. So for example, this might also be a five. So they would do mathematics, which means they need to move them around, to teach reading and also to make words. So how would stones with this type of handwriting end up in the United States by the thousands? If there are one or two, you know, maybe something happened, contact between civilizations. But because there were thousands, it's thought that most likely that was a Phoenician settlement. And we are talking about this happening uh, years before Christ, years before the modern era, okay? Another candidate is the Roman Empire. You've heard of Rome, right? Yes. OK. Uh, this is a map of the empire. As you can see, it covers basically three continents, Africa, Europe, and Asia. And the Romans had uh, cargo ships very similar to these, which were huge. They could handle 1,000 tons of cargo, right? Uh, how many pounds is 1,000 tons? How many pounds is one ton? One. A thousand. A ton is a thousand pounds. So how many pounds is a thousand tons? A million. Okay. We're going to do a math class after this. So they can handle a million pounds of cargo. That means they're very big. 
very sturdy. They can hold up to 100 people. However, the Romans didn't have sophisticated navigational equipment. It wasn't easy for them. They didn't have sophisticated ways of knowing where they were going, which wasn't a big problem because most of their sea going was inside the Mediterranean. They didn't go very far. Um, at the one point in the Roman Empire, Christianity began to spread. And at that time, the Romans were polytheists, meaning multiple, multiple gods. Christianity is what kind of religion? Monotheistic. Monotheistic. So basically, people were walking around and saying to the emperor of Rome and everyone else that all of your gods are fake. There's only one god, ours. How do you think they received that? Not very well. And in fact, uh, one thing that happened is an emperor named Nero, who was widely thought to be insane, blamed Christians when there was a huge fire that burned most of Rome. And this was the capital of the entire empire. So he started to oppress them very heavily um, with tortures like burning, uh, crucifixion, being fed to lions, and things like that. So naturally they went into hiding, and they eventually tried to escape, including using these ships. Now, anywhere that they could go in the Roman Empire, there's only one way out, which is through the Straits of Gibraltar here and into the Atlantic Ocean, which leads towards the United States. And in fact, there had always been rumors that across that large body of water, there was land, okay? And it's thought that they reached the Americas because there are Roman artifacts found in different parts of the United States, including a particular alloy of bronze, that's a particular mix of metals that everyone in, I mean, that historians know only the Romans, Romans used because it had about 2% silver, which is very uncommon. So they know that that was Roman. And they also found iron made with a technique that, again, the Romans used. Last but not least, they found rocks with symbols similar to this. This is called a chrismon. And it was a secret symbol of Christianity used by the Christians when they were being persecuted in Rome so they could identify each other. And it was peculiar to them. This wasn't used widely outside of uh, those people. So what was I, it called? Chris Mon, C H R I S M O N. There are many different kinds. This is one of them. Some of them look like fish, but they wouldn't use crosses because that was an obvious symbol. So they used to use other symbols. And all of this together being found in the United States indicates that Romans of this period most likely fled uh, to the United States and successfully reached it in these very sturdy ships. And right, sorry, the last thing is that there were cups identical to cups found in Pompeii. Pompeii was a Roman city in what's now modern day Italy, and the composition of the cups, as well as their shape and design, was identical. So, how could that be a coincidence? Is what most historians familiar with this case are asking. The next candidate is two different Chinese explorers. Um, one thing that you may not be familiar with in history is that. Uh, various Chinese empires were the dominant political and economic force in the world for a very long time, including during the <coughs> Roman Empire. Um, so their navies were very capable. Now, at a certain point, uh, many P Buddhism spread to China. Chinese Buddhists, uh, led by someone named Hui Xin, decided that they were going to spread out in the world to try to spread Buddhism, just reach people, teach them this religion. He left, and after 40 years, Hoishin returned. Now, just to look at a map, this is where China is, this is the Pacific, this is the west coast of the United States. Okay? So after 40 years, this Hoishin came back with these descriptions of a very strange plant that fits the exact description of the agave plant, which is uh, found in Mexico primarily, but also other parts of Central America. And he also described the culture and religious practices of the Mayan civilization 
and in a, in a way that's identical to other descriptions. Have you heard of the Mayans before? Yes. Okay, right. Well, imagine that you read about them and then you read a book from someone uh, in ancient China who described them in the exact same way. Obviously, he met them, which means that he arrived to the American continent. And in his uh, records, he described the exact distance between China and Mexico, meaning he said, we traveled this, this many miles, and that's, that's the number of miles that we can measure today between those two countries. Another uh, explorer was named Zheng He, and actually this was a uh, Muslim explorer, and he took an armada of 200 ships, now these ships were very large, and they were so well equipped with water and other things that they even had a supply ship attached to them, which is what this small ship is in relation to the larger one. 200 of those, with all kinds of different scientists, as well as a military, simply to explore. That was it, one of the maps that we saw yeah. yesterday. The, one of his maps? Yeah, one of his two maps, yeah, right. of his travel. Now, in his uh, explorations, he reached um, Australia, New Guinea, New Zealand, and other places, <coughs> including the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean. Which ocean is this? Pacific. So you go from China, you cross the, the Pacific, you're in the United States. How would you get to the Atlantic? Cross. Uh, right. So I don't know how he did it. Maybe he went around South America. Somehow he did, in fact, arrive to the Caribbean and the Pacific. So the way that we know that is not only from his records, but there are Chinese artifacts that have been found throughout the Americas. Not only just on the West Coast, but even all the way across to the East Coast. And European explorers who later went into China during the Age of Discovery, which is what you're studying now, met Chinese people in the United States, meaning they were already there. Mm -hmm. They were already there when Europeans arrived. Yeah, in different parts of the United States. Now we have the Vikings. Has anyone ever heard of the Vikings? Yes. 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 Are you uh, currently watching the series? No. no. Okay, well, season five comes out November 20th. So anyways, uh, we'll talk about that later. What was that? We also saw the map about Vikings. Yeah. 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 Now, the, the Vikings were in Scandinavia, which is uh, Northern Europe, as well as Iceland, and Greenland. This is very close to Canada, right? So, it wasn't like a very long distance for them to get, and they recorded their adventures in sagas, these very, very long poems. It's kind of like a story, not all of it's true, but a lot of it can be checked with other historical records or other geographical descriptions to say, oh, they must be talking about these people or this place. And that's why we know a lot about their voyages to the Americas, because we have these sagas. And they used a ship called Knars for long deep water voyages. This is the way that the English uh, described them, but they looked probably similar to this. It's long, they can row, and also sail. Now, over a very long period, starting at 900 AD, but not only once, multiple explorers or even refugees reached uh, the Americas, meaning the American continent, Canada, from Iceland and Greenland. And they used to even have wars with the Native Americans. Sometimes they were at peace with them. The, the land in Canada and even the United States, it's much more fertile than Iceland, Greenland, and Scandinavia. So they always wanted to settle there. The Mali Empire is another candidate. And uh, the Mali Empire was in West Africa. And actually, this is one of the people that we're going to study as one of the most I would say famous families that you've never heard of. Okay, uh, the founder of the Mali Empire was the person whom the story of the Lion King is based on. I'm sure, you heard of that? Yes. His name was Sanjiata. He's the founder of the Mali Empire. Do we study? Do we study? Yeah. Okay. One of his successors, Abu Bakri, is known to have gone to the United States. But when he left, 
the person that he left in charge, meaning he was a king, he said, I'm not going to be king anymore. I'm going to leave. I want to find something. I want to explore. The person he left behind was Mansa Musa. Have you heard of him? Yes. What's his claim to fame? The richest person. The richest person ever. Right. So imagine all these people are in the same family. Abu Bakr wanted to expand his empire from here across the sea. It's a lot easier to, you can cover a lot more distance a lot easier when you can sail than when you have to fight for every inch, right? So he sent a bunch of ships and they left and only one returned. And the one that returned said there was, there was a river in the ocean like a snake and it took us away. Everyone but me, I turned back. So he got hundreds of ships that were over 100 feet long, similar to this, perhaps, as well as support boats like the Chinese, and he left. He said, I can't believe this. As a king, I'm putting down my crown. I'm going to lead this voyage to see what happened when you saw this river in the sea. And he was never seen again. Did he just die? Well, Portuguese and Spaniards met Africans in the Atlantic Ocean, meaning they crossed paths with them. As they were sailing, they met Africans sailing the other way. And they also met them in various parts of the Americas. And there is again an alloy, which is a specific mix of metals peculiar to the Mali Empire, have been found. So first of all, people didn't usually use gold as the tip of their spears. The Mali Empire was so rich they could use gold for everything, right? And that river in the sea is actually a current which exists today, which basically will pull you without the wind. It's the water itself pulling you towards the Americas. It does, in fact, exist. And there were Olmec heads like these, which are actually very ancient, found in Mesoamerica. I think you studied the Olmecs, right? These are found in the Americas. Yes. These might not be from the Mali Empire, but much earlier. The truth of the matter is, many people have been known to have gone to the Americas. Fishermen who got lost and came back and said, oh, we sailed for a month and we came back. Right? Uh, Irish people who were being persecuted by Vikings or others, so they jumped on ships and left. If you look at this map, right here, you can see that the connection to the Americas from Asia is, even without this being frozen anymore, it's not very hard to get there. And if you look here, Greenland, again, is not very far from Canada. There's a person named Piri Reis. Did you study his map? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, he was a person in the Ottoman Empire. In the year 1510, he made a map and we still have some parts of it. We don't have the whole thing. But that map from the year 1510 shows Europe, and it shows America's Atlantic coasts, as well as even Antarctica, very accurately. And the map comes from 10, 10 <laughs> Arab sources, Indian maps that he got from the Portuguese, as well as Christopher, one of Christopher Columbus's maps. But the sources besides Columbus are older than that. So basically saying this map shows the Americas, but I made it from older maps and I just put all the pictures together to make one. Okay? Many cultures and many civilizations had tales of a land across the sea. And the only way that story could be there is if someone had been there. You can even walk. As I said, there are different ways of connecting by land. You don't even need sails because, as you see, there are currents here which will drag you to the Americas, to and from. These, uh, this map and these arrows show currents where basically there's a river in the ocean that will pull you. Even if you didn't have sails, you could, be, you could wash up on the American coast against your will. Let's talk about Christopher Columbus. He's very famous, and he did go to America. First of all, in his particular dialect of Italian, his name was Cristofa Colombo. The Spanish called him Cristobal Colón. 
And the picture that you usually see of him with kind of an olive colored skin and the dark hair is inaccurate. He is actually known to have fiery red hair. Okay? Now, he was an explorer, and he made a deal with the uh, king of Spain one on the same year as the Reconquista. Does anyone know what the Reconquista is? Sorry? Uh, is it the same thing as Renaissance people? No, it's not the same thing as the Renaissance. It was actually after that, but there is a connection. What basically happened is that people called the Moors, who were Muslims of different ethnicities, but they were known collectively as Moors, uh, brought a lot of science into Europe. They ruled over parts of Spain, Italy, France, and a few other countries at different times in history until the year 1492. But one thing that they brought with them was navigational knowledge. And they had maps of the Americas, as we mentioned with Peri Race. What the difference between Columbus and the other people that we talked about is this printing press. What does the printing press allow you to make? <laughs> So print a document, many, as many as you want. Yes. How did they make books before that? Writing. Can I see that book? Your red book? It's on your desk. Yeah. Before the printing press, for all of you to have a book, somebody would have to sit with a pen and copy every single page of this. How many of you would like to do that? Okay, with the printing press, you get the book the way that you get them now, right? Through machinery. So Columbus's discovery or his arrival could be published for the world to know about. The Vikings were in Scandinavia, they only dealt with each other. They wrote their sagas by hand in Icelandic or Norwegian. Whereas with Columbus, you can actually translate it into any language you want and print thousands of copies of that. With the royal connection that he had, he was able to have that access where he was famous. So the reason why we've heard about Columbus is he got famous for discovering the Americas. Other civilizations weren't necessarily in contact with many other civilizations, the ones that we talked about. Okay, And there was this idea of colonial prestige, this pride to claim, we discovered America. We are the first. Others had different reasons for going to the Americas. Why did those Roman Christians go to the United States? To escape. escape. Were they going to brag to tell everyone in Rome where they were? No. No, they were Come get me. They were, they were, they were going to keep it a secret, the opposite of this. right? So yeah. that's why you wouldn't really hear about them, but of course, you would eventually find them. Likewise with the Phoenicians. They just wanted to get away from the Greeks so they could continue to sacrifice each other. So who was responsible for the printing press? Johannes Gutenberg. Johannes Gutenberg. Yeah. Uh, do you have a question? Yeah. So the people at Columbus um, enslaved, were those the people who tried to escape? Um, no, I think you're talking about two different things. But, um, one thing that happened is that he, with the age of uh, discovery, they actually conquered the Americas. They took over. Phoenician refugees, fishermen who get blown away by the wind, you know, this African king who really wanted to trade, they weren't trying to conquer and say, this is ours. They just wanted to go and live there. The Vikings just wanted farmland, right? So there was this idea of taking over, which means that they would make their language become the language of the place. What's the, the most widely spoken language in South America? English. English. I hope you, someone didn't just say English. South, South America. Spanish. 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 Portuguese. 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 What country does Spanish come from? Spain. Spain. Only one country Spanish comes from. How many countries does Portuguese come from? Brazil. One. What, and what about North America? What's the dominant language? English. English, and there was some French. So basically, we have four countries 
coming in to just say we're going to take over and everyone's going to speak our language now, our religion, etc. And there were reasons for that. There was a cover-up. Okay? They were going into the United States and meeting people who spoke Welsh. Has anyone, has anyone heard of Wales? Yes. 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 Okay. Imagine you go to the Americas and you meet a tribe of Native Americans, but some of them have lighter skin and they're speaking Welsh. Right? They met African chi tribes. They met Chinese people. They saw Egyptian hieroglyphs. Why did they not cover that up? They were colonists in the age of discoveries, conquistadors, conquerors. They weren't explorers. They weren't trading. They weren't refugees looking for safety. What were they trying to do? They wanted to take the mineral wealth, rubies, emeralds, bigger than your hand, stories of a river full of gold, right? They wanted to plant cash crops. Does anyone know what those are? No. It's food that you grow specifically to sell. For example, cotton, sugar. These things, tobacco, they brought to the United States or they found in the United States and said, I want to grow a lot of this to sell. If you enslave people, then you can make a lot more money because you're not paying them, right? And they also wanted the land to plant those. You can't grow tobacco in England, but English people would use plantations in Jamaica or other parts to grow those crops. I'll take your question in a few minutes, okay? Another reason is that they wanted new markets for their goods which were not that competitive, specifically because textiles and other products from China and West Africa were often of a better quality, so it was hard for the Europeans to do trade. If you go to another place, take over, and force people to buy those things, we have a new market. These were their purposes. Because of that, it was basically a first come, first serve principle. I come to a land, I put the flag of Spain, this now belongs to Spain. Oh, you don't agree? Well, we've got guns and you don't. So that's basically what happened. And because of that, they wanted to always say that we came first. We were the first civilization here. There were libraries in Mexico. There was architecture in Central America and throughout the, what's now the United States. A lot of that got destroyed. Whole languages were lost. There were thousands of languages. Now most of the native languages are no longer spoken. All of the knowledge that those people had that they've been passing down. We met Chinese people. Well, that's lost for the most part. Very little of it is left. So uh, for further reading, I mentioned that the source of this report, this presentation, was this book before Columbus, Early Voyages to the Americas. Uh, I had a lot of this information before, but I chose to use this book so that you can access it, because this book is from the LAS library. So if you wanted to know more, and there are civilizations and parts of the stories that I didn't mention, you can take this from the library. I'll check it back in today if you want to go look. Um, another good book to look at is called uh, They Came Before Columbus by a scholar named Ivan Van Sertima. And the reason I'm recommending that is because there are a lot of lectures uh, by this author available on YouTube. Last but not least, the world itself. If you really want to know what happened, Go and see. Go and see. Go and explore. You have a long summer vacation. A lot of you go to different countries. Look in the museums. Visit a university. Go to the actual you know, archaeological sites of some of these ancient civilizations. You could go yourself and see some of the artifacts and structures left by pre-Columbian explorers who reached the United States. Uh, these are some pictures of different civilizations and their artifacts and their architecture that existed before Columbus and even some of the other groups that I mentioned arrived. So last but not least, we have to ask, wouldn't the Native Americans be considered the discoverers of the Americas? Everyone that I mentioned to you met them. Yeah. Maybe they were there first. Maybe they were there first. 
So at the end of this presentation, I want to reiterate one point. The question, who discovered America, is still a question. And I encourage you to go out and find the answer. Right, like spiritual and communal uses. My point was that that was actually an American crop, but once the, um, I guess once it got sort of discovered that it grew in what's now the United States, colonists turned it into a cash crop. We're gonna make huge farms of it to sell because when people smoke tobacco, they get addicted, so it's easy to have a market. So it was a cash crop. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Sure. Okay, well, I guess that's it.